What's up YouTube? Today, I'm gonna go over how to create a simple little server in OCaml. What this OCaml server is gonna do is you're going to make a post request to it, and that post request is gonna have some JSON formatted matrix in it. The OCaml server is going to parse that, calculate the determinant of the matrix, and then return that back to the client. Now, this topic might seem a little bit out of left field, but I noticed a lot of you seem to like my last OCaml video, and well, I'm kind of an attention whore. So I'm gonna follow that trend and create a more advanced topic videos for OCaml. Because I can say from personal experience, it's hard learning OCaml because there's not a lot of YouTubers that cover it and the docs are not the best. No offense to anyone out there who writes OCaml documentation, but um, you're bad at your job. Moving on. Okay, we are going to get into the code. As you can see here, I have a lot of stuff commented out. That's because I actually already wrote this entire project. And because I am a dirty hack, I am just going to be uncommenting it as the video goes on because I don't feel like rewriting it all over again. So have fun with all of that. I did, however, mutilate my Dune file. And that's the first thing I'm going to get into. So OCaml as a language has Dune as its build project manager. So it's a pretty cool build system. What you wanna do is declare an executable and we're gonna give it name equals server because it corresponds to the server.ml file. And make sure they're just in the same directory right here. I've played around with putting server in like a source directory. It doesn't work as well as you think. And be sure to import any libraries. So I'm gonna be using these three dependencies. So let's head on over to server.ml. And this is basically all the code we're looking at. You can kind of just ignore this. Let me get this out of here. Get out of here. Okay, that's better. So we have server, right? So everything inside here is our server. We declare a callback with like connection. I guess that's a request and then body. And we're gonna turn this body stuff into a string. And we pipe that into data, which, oh, yeah, that's actually how that works. So fun fact, I actually, in traditional comp sci major fashion, I copy pasted the base code of all this from GitHub because, as I said before, documentations for OCaml are very bad. So don't at me because you know damn well you do it too. But I did change this code around. I made it my own. And I now think I fully understand how it works. So where were we? Yeah, you take in, it's a callback function. It takes in these three parameters. We're gonna convert body into string. And that's actually gonna be the data payload that comes in with our post request that we're gonna make to this server. And we're gonna call that data as the string version because I think too many bodies gets confusing. Wow, that sounded dark. Anyway, so once we have our data, we are going to print to standard error is body because what happens is when we print to standard out, that's what's gonna be sent back to the client. So if we want to see what we're actually printing in the console, we're gonna to have to use eprintf, which is print to standard error. So we're gonna print out what the body is, and then we're gonna flush standard error, and then we're gonna print back, I'm a server, because, well, that's a true statement. This is the OCaml server. And then we're going to do whatever this is, I'm not entirely sure still. Uh, oh no, you know what this is? This is the actual return stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's looking like we pipe the standard output of this into this as body. And we're gonna give it an okay status. So it's gonna have a status of 200. It's gonna be okay. And we're gonna give it whatever all this means. It, it, eventually, we're gonna give back a response with HTTP header 200 and this data that's saying I'm a server. That's what it's gonna be. And so we define this callback and we're gonna run this when we initialize the server. So I'm gonna print the standard error servers online just so that way we know it's online. And then we're gonna create the server TCP, but who cares about that? Port 2017, because that was my graduating year from high school, so I like that number. And we're gonna go ahead and call server.make, which I guess makes the server. Yeah, and then we're gonna go ahead and run server, which I guess is gonna call this actual function, whatever this thing is, just it, it's, it's gonna run it. I mean, you get it, you don't have to fully understand it. Like, Let's actually go ahead and try running this. 
So to run Dune, you just say Dune build, and then we're gonna give it server.exe, which is a weird name for Linux, but on OCaml, everything is the executable name.exe. So if you actually go back and look at our Dune file, you'll see executable name server. So it's gonna be server.exe. So we're gonna go ahead and build that. And if you have warnings in OCaml for Dune, it's going to give you an error. So what we're actually gonna do is run it with this dash dash profile, that's spell that right, yeah, release. And now it compiles. So if you list it again, you will see, now we have this weird old underscore build folder. So we're gonna go into this, build default server.exe. So let's go ahead and try running it. And the server is online. So let's actually go ahead and see if we can bug that server. So we're gonna go ahead and hit localhost at 2017 data. Hey there. So when you're using the curl command, if you give data like I am here, then it's gonna be a post request. And this hey there is what's going to be input into our server. Hit that. And yeah, it registers in the server body. So right off the bat, you have a very simple OCaml server. Hey everyone. A quick note from future me, the video can essentially end here. This is all you need to know to make a server in OCaml. However, I am going to go over parsing JSON and calculating the determinant of a matrix in OCaml. So if your goal was to just know how to start up a simple server in OCaml, you know, you're done. But if you want to keep on going, I would really appreciate it. Okay, back to the video. Oh, and look at that. It even, uh, it even printed that out. How nice. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and have it print out a new line as well. I don't, I think this looks ugly. That was my bad. Okay, so we have this very basic server right now, but what a lot of servers have to do on the internet is process JSON. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to go ahead and use the yo JSON library. So we're gonna go back to our Dune file and we're gonna put in yo JSON in here. So that way we can actually use that. So we have yo.json now, and I'm going to put some of this stuff, I'm gonna write some of that stuff back in here. So instead of just sprint f, sprint fing I'm a server, we're going to go ahead and parse our input data as basic yo.json. And I'm using yo.json.basic here because the regular yo.json module actually does not have a set parser as far as I know. I think you can pass in some sort of like JSON lexer or parser or whatever, but I don't know any of them. So I just want to use yojson.basic. All right, and so what this is going to do is from string. So we're going to take in string data, we're going to parse as JSON and put it into this variable. So let it equals all that in, and right here I've got some crazy stuff. I'll get into what that is in a minute. So we have let JSON equals all this stuff in, and now I'm gonna copy paste all this craziness right here and make a few changes because we're not quite here just yet. So the OCaml JSON type has a lot of different subtypes. You have like tick lists, I guess this is like slanted tick. So you have lists, which is, you know, it's like a list in JSON. It's a bunch of different JSON stuff inside each other. And we only want it to be a list here and not anything else because we're gonna have a list of lists and that's gonna be our matrix for when we calculate the determinant. So assuming it's a list L, we are going to let M equal listify and I'll get to that in a minute. And then this is how we're gonna calculate the determinant. And then we're going to sprint F that back to the console with a nice little new line. Well, we print it out to the client, not necessarily a console, but just, you know, a client. So first again to listify and then determinant. But actually, I think I'm just going to, yeah, I'll get to determinant in a minute. So with listify, this is my function for converting a JSON list of lists into a integer list of lists. And that's going to make it a lot easier for us to mess with it when we calculate the determinant. So with listify, inside here we have intify, but don't worry about that just yet. Only look at this code right here. 
So if it's an empty list, you're just going to turn empty list because that's like the base case. If the current thing you're looking at is a, another JSON list, that's like your inner list because it's a two-dimensional array essentially of JSON, then we're going to go ahead and call intify. I'll get to that in a minute. And then we're going to call listify on the next element in the upper level list. And anything else, we should probably raise an error. Now, intify, this is going to run on the one dimensional lists that make up the overall grid. And if we have an integer, then that's great. We will just return said integer because it's an int type. And then we'll just look at the next element in that second order list. And anything else, we raise the error. So this is our listify function. This will take in the JSON list that we got, L, which hopefully is a list of lists, and then it'll output a list of int lists, and that will be M for matrix. And then we're going to go ahead and calculate the determinant of M and then print that out, as I said. So let's go ahead and see how to do determinant. I'm going to open the ter here, and we are also going to open it in this. And now we need to add a dune entry for deter, which is the file I'm using to calculate determinants. So it's going to be called library name deter. And because we have two entries here now, we're going to have to give them both a modules entry. So just call like modules deter and modules server. So once we got this, we can now use our deter.ml inside server.ml which is good because we try opening it right here. So let's actually take a look at deter.ml. Okay, so this code isn't as important. It just calculates a determinant. Essentially, it takes in a list of integer lists and it outputs an integer. You don't actually have to make it calculate a determinant. I was just sitting in linear algebra and we were talking about it one day and I heard recursion and I immediately thought, oh, camel. But the irony is I'm not using much recursion for this. It's mostly a imperative implementation, which is probably kind of stupid, but that's not the main part of this project. Literally, you could just take in a matrix and return like the number two, you know, any number you want to return. I just thought it was cool to also do determinants. So yeah, really any int list list to int hash you want to make to put in this file is fine, but I will have the code to this in the GitHub repo. So if you're really dead set on making determinants for whatever reason, you know, by all means, go ahead and do that. So now that we call that function in here, now when we run the server, now I could go ahead and do all this build, dune build stuff, but actually I created a make file, which calls all that for me which is super lazy, but also pretty cool. And I've also got dot slash run, which runs the exe file for me. So all I'm going to do is make, it's built and dot slash run, and it's online. So we're going to curl you, and we get an error because uh, this is not JSON right here, it's not. So let's go ahead and make it a JSON list. Make it a list of lists. One comma zero comma zero comma one. So this is a two by two matrix and let's see if the determinant server gets what it is. Yeah, one, that's literally the determinant. But what about two? Oh, uh, well, there we go, it got two. Okay, let's try a bit of a bigger matrix. Now, a real easy way to check this is if you have a n by n matrix in row echelon form, I think, then you can actually just calculate the determinant by multiplying the entries in the diagonal. So for here, it's going to be, actually, let me make this bigger. So for this one, it's going to be 2 times 1 times 4. So that's 8, and it's 8, right? So you know our server works. Even though that part is just the determinant, you guys already saw the actual server working. So at this point, we don't even need to debug it anymore. Like it's perfectly fine. It was fine probably like five minutes ago, but I just want to show off determinants. So that concludes how to make a simple HTTP server in OCaml. 
If you found this video helpful or if you want to learn more about OCaml or other programming languages, definitely subscribe to my channel, click the little bell to stay notified, all that type stuff. If you want to support the channel, you can like, share, comments, anything to make YouTube think that I'm on the rise, which I really am, you know, I am. One extra subscriber a month is technically a rise. If you want to check out my code more, I have a link to the GitHub in my description. If there's anything else you want me to do in OCaml, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.